Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Obviously, for USC fans, the last 72 hours, as it pertains to the transfer portal, have been disappointing, have been frustrating. And the USC fans who've been rocking with the fellas for the last couple of weeks, really the last year at this point, the USC fans, y'all continue to show a ton of love, a ton of support. You guys know that I'm going to shoot it straight with you guys, right? When we have times to celebrate about commitments, new coaching staff, we're going to get fired up. When things don't go USC's way, we're going to talk about it. And obviously, the last couple of days, and really the transfer portal during that spring spring window, hasn't gone USC's way. Now, I want to talk about where USC goes from here, obviously, with Derek Carmen committing to Oregon. But I want to start with just kind of a thought that I've been playing around with over the last couple of days, and really the last couple of hours since Derek Carmen has committed to Oregon, and that is, what was our biggest concern with USC on the defensive line? Yes, you wanted game records. You guys wanted difference makers, right? Derek Carmen was a difference maker. But you look at the biggest concern that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, it has a lot more to do with depth and having just capable bodies going into the Big Ten in 2024. You talk about what makes it happen at the Big Ten. It's depth along the lines of scrimmage. And what I'm thinking about is it was clear that Derek Carmen, USC, had a very lucrative package for Derek Carmen. And I guess what I'm saying is what happens if USC splits that one big lucrative package up into three and goes out and lands just three quality bodies for that USC defensive line want to talk about a few options that USC has on the inside of that defensive line. Excited to get into it for the last two and a half hours. Since the Derek Harmon news, I've been looking at defensive linemen, been watching game tape from, I mean, the FCS level, the group of five level spring games. Excited to get into it. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys, to the USC fans. I mean, whether it's the highs, the commitments, the coaching, hires, whether it's the lows, the amount of support y'all continue to show to the fellas, it it means the world. Can't thank you guys enough. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with it. One of my favorite players that's quite frankly available in the portal right now, Ben Roberts from the Oregon Ducks. And Ben Roberts seemed to be a guy that would have been at the very least in the 2D, potentially a starter for the Oregon Ducks. Heading into 2024 before the Derek Carmen news, you go watch the spring game again. Ben Roberts looked to be one of the better Oregon defensive linemen. A lot of Oregon fans would vouch for that too. He was the guy that we talked about after the spring game as potentially being a difference maker. He hits the transfer portal. Wouldn't be surprised if it had something to do with Derek Carmen coming in and say, Ben Roberts, in my mind, comes right into this USC team and probably starts right next to Bear Alexander on the inside of that defensive line, 6'2", 3'10". You watch the spring game and say you can tell that he's going into year three of his college football career. He's put together. He's physical at the point of attack. He's not necessarily the game record penetrator that Bear Alexander is going to be for USC, but he's a guy that's going to eat up double teams. He plays with low pads, heavy hands. That's kind of the body that USC is looking for. And I think Ben Roberts would be a phenomenal target for USC. The next guy I want to talk about sticking in Eugene is Johnny Bowens. A really interesting prospect coming out of Texas in 2023 was a guy that came out of high school at 260. Now, I don't know what he's been eating and what he's been doing in the weight room. You guys see the picture on the screen. About the thickest neck I've ever seen. He's up to 290. He is a guy that I like coming out of high school. He has that frame now to play on the inside. You talk about collecting capable bodies, depth bodies on the inside of that defensive line. Johnny Bowens, not a ton to go on, but a guy that from a body type standpoint, you're probably willing to bet on. And again, flash the athleticism and dominance as a high school kid coming out in the 2023 class. The next name to talk about is a, a kind of an interesting story. Brandon Lane one of the more coveted defensive linemen that was available on the portal. He committed to Michigan State earlier this week. For whatever reason, it didn't work out, quote-unquote, mutually parting ways. That's what I gathered from the Michigan State message board. I don't know if it was mutual, quite frankly, because Brandon Lane's a good player. He's back on the market, and you look at USC and where they could go. Brandon Lane was a guy that a lot of Power 5 programs, a lot of coaches were very interested in. You look at USC, I think Brandon Lane comes in, and I don't know if he's an immediate starter for USC, but you talk about a capable depth piece body at 6'3", 300 pounds, a guy that is very good against the run, at least a number show from Stephen F. Austin. This would be another really interesting 
target for USC in the portal. The next guy I want to talk about, a guy that we briefly talked about a couple of days ago that hit the portal that kind of piqued my interest, Danny Saley, who, again, coming from the JUCO ranks this summer, had offers from Oklahoma, Texas Tech. He ends up going to BYU, stays there for the spring, hits the transfer portal once again. One of the reasons why I was so fired up about Isaiah Rakes is he was that true nose tech kind of body. You look at Danny Saley, he's kind of that guy. He's not going to be a guy that goes 10 sacks, 15 tackles for a loss. He's not going to stuff the stat sheet, quite frankly. That's what Bear Alexander's for. But he's a guy that allows Bear Alexander to have better opportunities. Talk about 6'3", 355, just a physical presence. He's going to be the one commanding the double teams, eating up some of that space. And you look at all the top defenses across the country, even UCLA last year, they had a guy at the name of Gary Smith who kind of played that role allowed for other guys to get good matchups. That's Dan Lynn's defense. He's going to scheme up his players to be impact guys. Danny Saley is a guy that is not necessarily going to be the impact guy in the stat sheet, but is going to allow guys like Bear Alexander to get some better matchups, get moved along the defensive line. I think Danny Saley, not the flashiest name, I think he'd be a body that USC fans would very much welcome into that USC defensive line room. Next guy I want to talk about, Javier Suggs coming from Grand Valley State Division II up in Michigan, a guy that Michigan State's going after. He's currently on a visit to Florida State. This kid's Division II, 24-7 sports. They didn't have a profile of him. He's a guy that, again, that body that you're looking for, 6'3", 295, was one of the best players at the Division II level. And this is one that I couldn't find any game film on, so I'll say hand up. I'm kind of speaking blind. But one of those things that you trust all the Power 5 coaches, right, the amount of offers that he's picked up, including USC, you trust that those Power 5 coaches and those programs, the personnel departments, they've done their research. They know this is a guy that can be a Power 5 player. Wouldn't mind to see USC kick the tires there. And then the last guy I want to quickly talk about is Ropa Buckley, who was a coveted prospect coming out of the state of Michigan at the high school ranks, goes to Nebraska. That piece for Nebraska the last couple of years, this spring decided to cha- transition to the offensive line. He put on that weight. It sounds like he hit the portal again, going to go back to the defensive line. Another guy that I look at for USC and say, that's the kind of body that we're looking for. Big 10 experience. Again, I don't think a guy that comes in and is necessarily a game changer for USC, but another body that you can rotate in and kind of trust to play at that Big 10 level. And at the end of the day, you look at USC, a prerequisite to this conversation I'm not counting out guys like Carlin Jones coming in in the summer, a guy like Gita Abisari, who I know that a lot of USC fans have seen the pictures of, a guy that we talked about coming from the high school ranks. Those guys can certainly play. But do you, if you're USC, do you want to go into the 2024 season having to rely on true freshmen to play along the line of scrimmage? Probably not the best, probably not the best circumstance. So a guy like Roquan Buckley, I think, would be another really nice addition for USC. We'll see who USC decides to go after, but at the end of the day, I think the task for USC, the USC personnel staff and the coaching staff is to take that package that you are going to give to Derek Harmon and say, we're going to split it up into three. We're going to bring in three really quality bodies for this USC program. We'll see if they need to make it happen. I'll say it again. If USC figures out the inside of the defensive line, I think that secondary is going to be damn good. I think the coaching staff for the linebackers with the addition of Easton Mascarenas Arnold is going to be solid. I think the edge rushes are damn good. I think this USC defense can make strides, but you got to address the inside of that defensive line. We'll see who they go to. If they do land some commitments, we'll throw on the sweatshirt. We'll talk about it. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to you all later.